I am going to call. Oh, you're all set. All righty. I am calling the Village Finance Advisory and Enhancement Committee of June 7th, uh, 2023, to order. Roll call, please. Uh, committee Member Cutler. Here. Committee Member Hillebrand. Tim, I see you're on, but can't hear you. Uh, committee Member Henry. Here. Committee Member Brandt. Um, committee Member Pomakowski. Here. President Langfeld. Here. All right, we're at uh, public comment. This is an opportunity for anyone to address the Finance Advisory Enhancement Committee. Please observe the time limit of three minutes while the Finance Advisory Enhancement Committee encourages input from residents. It may not discuss or act on any issue that is not duly noticed on the agenda. I, I don't, do we have anybody? I'm not sure who's called in. Uh, Tim. Okay, gotcha. Um, so with no one else, so let's go to reports. Uh, I don't have anything to add that we're not gonna talk about uh, tonight. Jay, I think you muted yourself. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Are there any committee members? All right, finance director report. Um, I just wanted to mention our next meeting is July 5th. I didn't know if anyone was gonna be out of town. I just wanna make sure we have a quorum for that meeting before we schedule it and I'll be here. I will My be life's here. boring, so I'll be here. Shouldn't matter to me. I never know what my schedule is anyway. All right. That's all I had then. All righty. Uh, general business, discussion and possible approval of the May 3rd, 2023 Finance Advisory and Enhancement Committee minutes. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same. All right, so moved. We'll go to number two, discussion and possible action regarding green space mowing contract versus in-house mowing. Uh, Bobby, why don't you start it with uh, your memo if you want to give uh, a quick overview? Sure. Um, I, not sure if we talked about it, but our mowing contractor that we've had for years and years, um, you know, like everyone else having staffing issues, so they decided not to rebid it for 2023. Um, when we put it out to bid, um, it, we only, I think it was two bids or three bids, Jay. Um, but anyway, the lowest one was way higher than what we had been paying. Um, and so now we're, it's getting to the point where we need to determine if it's still worth using a contractor or if this is something we can do at a savings in-house. Um, so the part that I kind of looked at was labor. Um, and talking with Jerry and Mike, they kind of, they knew it would be more than 40 hours a week um, during our optimal times. Um, and I know... Jerry had said our, our contractor let them know recently it's about 50 hours a week. Um, so their optimal recommendation is to hire a full-time person. That way they could have them year round and then um, another additional part-time person for the peak time. Um, so I did some calculations here. Um, the one full-time year round staff member is um, hiring someone at the wage we've been hiring public works people at. Um, and then that includes, you know, they chose a family health plan and, you know, retirement, Medicare, all that stuff is the 78,000. And then I ran some different numbers on part-time, you know, if we wanted um, how many hours a week, how many weeks per year, 
a couple different wages and you, know, you can see those figures there. So then I just picked a couple combinations there at the bottom. See, that was wages. Are there any questions on that or did Jaylene talk about your part? First? Yeah, I did, just so people know, uh, last year we spent $35,203 for mowing. This year at 30 weeks, if it goes 30 weeks, it'll be 120,540. So it's an increase of 80, over $85,000. Um, if we do the 28 weeks, then it's 112,000 um, bucks. I just went with the 30 weeks because that's what Jerry thought on his, just to be consistent with some of the numbers. Um, so that's kind of the, it's a huge, when, when we say huge, that's, you know, 300% increase on, on our, our mowing. So then uh, uh, Bobby did the, the labor part. So then I asked Jerry what equipment we would need. And instead of rewriting everything, I basically, the, the, the black writing is what I um, sent to him. And then the red is what he um, returned to me. So they're looking at two mowers at 17,000 a piece and then 1,500 for maintenance. Um, we would need a trailer at 5,000. Um, and then we don't have for the blower and the, the trimmer, but you can probably count four to $500 a piece. Uh, for those, I would, would guess that would be a fair. So it's 1,500 and then about $12,000 in gas. So uh, the first year we're up around, that would put us uh, 34, 35, 40, uh, 60 some thousand bucks. Um, but the biggest thing to me is, are we gonna be able to actually hire? Uh, we've had a difficult time in doing that. So when you do the break of what the labor, we're probably, I would guess we're, with the numbers, we'd be in that upper 70 to low 80,000. Um, and then this is add the 12,000 that we would have to do for gas. So now we're up to 95,000. And then if you look at uh, 1,500 in maintenance, we're up in the upper 90s uh, right off the bat. And that doesn't include the depreciation or the spread of the basically $40,000 in trailer and mower that you should depreciate because they probably aren't gonna last much more than 10 years, 10, 15 years. And that's just a guess on my part. I just don't think mowers last that long. So uh, I'm, I'm for mine, just doing the numbers, I'm not really sure it's, uh, we're at the level of uh, taking this on ourselves, but I'm, it'd be interesting to see what other people are thinking. Um, my question is, is, one of the ways I've decreased our mowing in our yard, which also made our yard a lot healthier than others, is adding micro clover which, you know, only grows six inches, which is the magical number for um, the top height you can have in the village without getting in trouble. And is some of this area stuff that we could turn into prairie grass so that it's environmentally friendly, all um, native species, and more importantly, not need to be mowed? Well, I, I think that those are good suggestions on how to maybe bring down the cost. But right now I'm looking at us mowing versus contracting out. I, I Can agree. Can you that. find a contractor? I don't know about uh, all the contractors I've been working uh, with lately have had horrible times with staffing as well. And getting them to be able to do anything has been extremely difficult because they just either don't have the staff or don't have good enough staff that it is worthwhile. 
All right. And so Jay, you're, you're saying that it's about 90,000 if we did it in-house with just the one full-time person, right? Based on those numbers? No, I was going on uh, that combination of full-time. Yeah, bring it down. Uh, it'd be one full-time year-round and one 14 Part weeks, time. so it's 80. Yeah. So I was I mean, I guess at, the other... The other part to that is, is, you know, the person that's mowing the lawn is technically doing that for 30 hours. And then you've got somebody to help with snow removal. So, I mean, while that position obviously increases that amount, they will have other responsibilities. So I don't know if you can oh. technically kind of pull that full amount into the lawn mowing duties, if you get my point. Yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, we're still paying for that, but it is divvied up between some other responsibilities too. Yeah, you're correct. You could cut off uh, basically five months worth of that seventy-eight thousand then, because if he did April through no uh, October, that's what seven months, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a good point, Jed. Very good point. The other, the other suggestion I might say, as far as I know, there was some concern about potentially hiring, you know, somebody part time. What I've noticed is, is the company that we hired this year is already subcontracting that local guy in town that runs around with that little simplicity motor. Nate, yep. I think is his name, the big old yep. guy. I mean, what if we went and approached him and said, hey, you know, you're already subcontracting with this guy. You know, would you be interested in doing, you know, continuing to do it next year and working with village staff? Oh. I think, yeah, He's we kind of talked about it. that a little bit too. He's right there in town. I mean, I don't, I have no idea what he charges or what, but he's obviously already there and he's doing it. So he has some familiarity with it. He already has the equipment. Obviously you're going to pay a little bit more if he's running his equipment, but considering staffing things and, you know, I think it's always advantageous if you could hire people within your community. Um, you know, I, I don't know what his deal is with the subcon or with the contractor currently, but I think it's at least worth a look or a conversation with him. Yeah, there's some circumstances with him that uh, uh, may be problematic. He needs, okay, uh, that, yep, yeah. unaware of that, but, so but, that's fine. Yeah, but that that's that's still a very good point. Very good point. Um, other people's thoughts. Um, if we do buy the equipment, I would recommend looking more at electric than gas because, you know, that's where mowers and such are moving towards. So we might as too well. Too much, too much mowing to do to do electric. Yeah. Yeah. Those things, they only have uh, like an hour at best. Yeah, I don't know if they make commercial mowers that are electric yet. Yeah. I mean, they're mowing 40, 50 hours a week. I mean, it's basically the guy gets on the mower in the morning and runs it all day long. I mean, you just can't do it. True. Uh, yeah. Uh, we could maybe do electric trimmers or, you know, yeah. look at those. I would get, yeah. I mean, if we had, is there any groups that will do have space for us this year or is everybody too busy no we have a contractor for this year we're just paying an outrageous price so this would be for next year yeah uh, uh, as i said i would look at drag the sustainability committee in and come up with some ways to maybe repurpose our green space in a better way so that we're not necessarily paying for everything. Well, I think a lot of what they mow is, you know, parks, you know, like ball fields, yeah. Xander Park, you know, playgrounds, things that, I mean, there may be a few areas we could plant other things, but I, I don't know we'll have too much savings. I mean, my perspective is I understand the hiring issues, but you know, I mean, when you look at the contractors, I think we had two or three bids. The one that we went with was the lowest bid. And there's a really good chance if things continue that they're going to raise next year as well. I mean, we already quadrupled this year. If it goes up again, I mean, I think it's worth at least trying to see. I mean, we might as well move in the direction of purchasing 
something, you know, maybe you only buy one machine um, and subcon in the direction based on what we're paying and what it would cost to do it. Yeah. I think Mike liked the idea of doing it in house too, like, especially for the ball parks. That way he could control what days they got mowed, you know, if there were games or whatnot. So I, well, I feel you like Mike was in favor of that. Uh, you have a little more pride in the product than, I mean, look, I see those guys run around the outside of my neighborhood and, you know, I mean, I think they do a half-ass job, even the last people sometimes. So, you know, I mean, if you got, if it's in house, especially with ball fields and things that matter, you're going to have a level of pride and it's going to be a better job. And yes, you can control when they do it as opposed to the contractor's schedule. Yeah. I'm just wondering uh if we could somehow figure out to do somewhat of a pilot program to actually test some of this stuff i'm just throwing things out there right now instead of going all in do we kind of uh stage it in you know well, one by one more and yeah, I'm thinking of one more and maybe a part time person and maybe we start with like Bear Park, for example, and see um, how that works or, you know, a couple, you know, just do it because that should bring down the cost of the contractor and it would give us an idea of really the, the work and time and some of the things that Jed has uh, brought up, I think are very valid. It would be really interesting to test some of that. I mean, that's, this is a huge investment that we're going in. I mean, we're, we're talking about almost uh, 200,000 uh, for the first year um, investment. I'm just wondering if we try testing it just to see, and I still don't have a problem with trying to reduce wherever we can um, I'm thinking a raspberry park, for example, do we need such a, uh, a break from the creek, you know, where the tall grass is to where the soccer field, could we eliminate another 15, 20 feet of that mowing space just to try to reduce some of the square footage that we're mowing, I, you know, and, and again, we'll, that's someone else needs to look at that, that wouldn't be us, but I'm just thinking uh, instead of going all in, is there a possible way of doing some type of pilot program with this, like we did with the leaf pickup? Why don't we hire, uh, isn't facilities hurting for people anyway? So if you hired a full-time person where half their job is this, you would have your pilot along with um, them getting some additional help. Plus it's kind of a good way of bringing someone in because you'll mowing is important, but it's a lower skill level, and you'll get to see if that person can grow into other things as well. Well, if you're going to hire a full time employee, then you might as well go all in because you're looking at, you know, that's well over most close to half of it. And then you're going to have to have at least the mower, and then you're going to have to have the trailer, and you're going to have to maybe have half the maintenance and maybe half the fuel, but you're still way up there in in total cause. I was just, I thought that the department was low on people anyway. Well, they're fully staffed now, but there is no doubt. Uh, I don't think as Jerry puts in his notes that for snow removal, they could use another body. And I'm sure, you know, I, I don't think anybody would be sitting around looking for things to do out of public works, but it's just a huge investment. When it, you know, labor is always your biggest cost when it comes mm -hmm. to the village and um, we got a definite, my only thing is right now, you know, I'm always looking to, to test, to see what problems and are these numbers really correct? And, you know, so I like to go on a so smaller scale if you can just to test it, but. Um, hey Jay. Yeah. Would there be, what about an idea of like, I'm like buying, let's say just like a regular John Deere lawnmower for something like Bear Park and having the baseball team or somebody there manage that. Is that something that could be done? You know, I don't know. I, I don't know the liability and how that all 
I mean, there's definitely, I, that's, a, that's an idea that could be looked at. I just can't answer if it's uh advisable. Yeah, I would think we would require them to have some type of insurance. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know how much time is there and I don't know if they're using a different equipment. I mean, usually with baseball fields, you know, you're trying to mow in, you know, you want the outfield to look a certain way and, you know, and as Mike was saying that, you know, obviously there's optimal days to have it mowed. If you have a little more control, if you had a lawn mower that you left there in the shed or whatever, you know, that's a lot lower cost than a, you know, professional one. Maybe that's a solution, at least in that particular area, but it might also cause more problems with having just one separate thing. That's something, it's definitely something to think about. Um, you know, maybe, you know, I mean, I'm not looking to get an answer one way or not tonight. I think we've had a good discussion. Maybe we should just uh, put this on next month and everybody kind of think about it. You've got everything here. I think there's great discussions. I'm going to have to redo my numbers because clearly yeah, I made a mistake by using the full time and stuff. So um, uh, I don't know. Uh, I haven't heard uh, Michael, you have any and Tim got any input? Uh, no, not really. I'm just trying to, I was just kind of just doing some calculator stuff here, just trying to figure out what it would be and yeah. whatnot. Okay. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It, it seems like it's going to be pretty close. Oh, yeah. And then you gain the other employee for other time. It's just whether or not we want that benefit. Yeah. I yeah, know. Yeah. I hear you. It's okay. Well, we'll so, let's just all let's think. Tim, you got something? We can hire a police officer to mow, you know, because that was the next yeah. employee on our list was to hire a police officer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right why doesn't why don't we do this why don't we uh we'll put this back on the agenda and let's just kind of everybody kind of think about it and maybe we can come up with uh, a couple more ideas that we can throw into this document i mean it clearly needs to be cleaned up before it goes back to the board but i don't think it needs to be brought to the board instantly i think we can spend a little bit of time uh, I, I, I i have one other question sure and that was when he talks about the maintenance of 1500 dollars per year but then he talks about trading the machines in regularly so they don't get too high on hours is that yeah. something we want to pursue or are we going to buy these things and use them for 15 years you know well that's a that's a really good question i mean i think again you'd have to um do the numbers because i think maybe what uh is that um you know kind of like we do with the uh, skid steer right where, yeah yeah i hear what you're saying maybe that is an option i don't know if you uh that's something i can ask jerry it i mean um, it just it just sort of seems it seems like you wouldn't be getting your money's worth out of the lawnmowers if you're regularly turning them over often right and no, you, you know, like we do it with the skid steer because once it goes off warranty, it's maintenance is really high. Well, I'm not sure that the maintenance on a lawnmower is quite the same as on a skid steer. Like there isn't, you know, I don't think there's that much hydraulics. I kind of went out and looked at these Skaggs Cheetah twos. I mean, they have like Kawasaki engines on them. Like they seem like they're made pretty well. Sure, sure. So, and you can almost you can calculate how many is if there's if it's 50 hours a week and we're doing it for 30 weeks right that's 1500 two mowers that's basically 750 hours uh a year right is well, my math right or yeah i i think that's right we just don't know how long a lawnmower lasts for right yeah. but if they're professional grade i wouldn't think they're going to be falling apart anytime soon people aren't going to be buying seventeen thousand dollar pieces of equipment every three years i mean nate, i would you, think five or so yeah see that's what i don't know i mean nate rides that simplicity and he's had that for quite a while yeah yeah you yeah. know and he uses it a lot 
Yeah. Um, according to a quick internet search, a low end commercial mower will last at most 1500 hours and a good John Deere, and this isn't from a John Deere website, can last up to 2500 hours. Um, 1500 hours only? That's pretty <laughs> much what it says. Uh, that said low end. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't, yeah. I don't and think if it's on the John Deere website, they're trying to get No, you. it is not on the John, oh, it's on a, an equipment site. As I said, it was a really quick, um, yeah. it I looks mean, like 3,000 is a relatively um, reasonable amount. There. So... I, I actually, yeah. when I was on the website for these things, there's a dealership that sells these things in Middleton. Oh. Yeah, I went to the uh, Cub Cadet over on Gammon Road when I got my new lawnmower, and they had commercial ones as well. And I had done a lot of research on which ones were um, good or not. I, I mean, I would imagine that the dealership in Middleton could probably answer a lot of these questions. Yeah. For us, so we're not guessing at it. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll tell you what. Why don't I, I'll do I'll I'll give them a call. I kind of know them down there. Is it why the don't you have, Power uh, John Center? Brandt do it? He's actually working in that field right now with K&A Ooh. Greenhouse and such. He might be able to uh, contact because that's with. KNA is now owned by one of the contracting places. I can't remember which one. So well, he might know a guy who knows a guy type of thing. Well, I I have bought all my stuff down there. If it's Middleton Power Center, is that where it is, Michael? Um, I'm checking right now, but that's where I think it was. If you just yeah. go out, if you just put the skag thing in, yeah, it's Middleton Power Center on Parmenter 3230. Yeah. yeah, I I know those guys pretty well. I'll I'm gonna, I'll go. I'll make a stop and and kind of figure that out. Yeah, like how long do they last? What yeah. would maintenance cost be? Like actually, how much how much gas would it use if you're doing 50 hours a week or whatever? You know, yeah. maybe, maybe they could estimate that. Yeah, no, I will. Uh, I can do that if that's right there in Middleton. I know those guys, so I'll take care of that. Hey, Bobby. Yeah. Quick question on the insurance thing. You said that if we had somebody else do his insurance, how do we? How did we make the agreement with like the four wheel club to help with like snow plowing? Was there some kind of memorandum of understanding? I don't think they snow plow anything, do they? No. How do they? Didn't we, didn't, wasn't that part of the agreement with the ATVs that they could like help with doing snow plowing or am I misremembering this? I think they offered to and we said thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They, they were, they bought the signs and we, I think we even installed them. We allow them to use it to, they can snow plow people's driveways with those things. But yeah, they don't do any clearing for us at all. Yeah, I, I think they more will go and clear elderly people's driveways if, if they get a call, stuff like that. Right, right. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right, does that, uh, so why doesn't everybody think about that? I'll go and I, I'm going to redo the numbers again, and then I'll go down to Middleton Power Center and try to get as much information that I can get on these Cheetah 2s. Sounds good. All righty. So let's and, and, uh, and, they, and, and they might even have other ones, you know. This yeah. was just, you know, this is just the one that Jerry said. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but we could look laterally for other things too. I mean, I don't know anything about commercial lawnmowers. I don't either, but uh, my neighbor, there's a uh, someone that lives in the neighborhood that does it professionally and they have uh a number and I've talked to them because everybody's going to the ones that you stand behind versus sit down right um, so I was always asking that I that was my curiosity why everybody's going to that and and then I asked them how much and they were having girlies I think or something like that is a brand that a lot of them were using so I'll, I'll take a look at that 
All right, let's go to discussion regarding uh, transportation utility. And this is just follow up. Um, remember the board was somewhat interested in get learning more about this. And what they had asked for us is for us to come up with what a potential cost for the, con the contracting services to put this into place. That's what I believe was the, the question that they had for us to, on this. Devin, tell us what you got. So I spoke with two groups about this and I'm going to screw up their names because I do that. Rutker and Milky, we're all familiar with them because we've watched their video and looked at their notes about the transportation utility funds. They said that um, a full service of setting it all up, which is comparing the impact of a top along with other funding mechanisms and figuring out everything down to the parcel. Basically they do every, and educating the ordinance and educating the public uh would be about twenty thousand dollars a year or twenty thousand dollars sorry not a year um they used the comparison of the town of gibraltar spent about that one and they've been able to recover about four hundred thousand dollars each year through tufts so that will help them greatly um the other group i talked to uh, sorry, just pulling up my email, um, was actually the group that does advising about municipalities in the village. Um, he, of course, did not, I'm just double checking the name because we had set up a meeting to talk. Um, and, ah. Uh, John from Ellers. Ellers, yep. Oh, yep. Um, and he is going to put something together for me an email. He that company works with another one combined to do about the same. And it sounded like it would be about the same price. And they're both very happy to come talk to the village board about how. Although that number sounds large, it will be recouped and what it will bring um, if the board is interested. Okay, well, that's good to know. And maybe we'll uh, uh, try to set something up later this year for that. I yeah, they're, the they're both, it, it was very interesting conversations. Neither one of them, had concerns about the court cases coming up being a reason to not do it. Um, and if that does become an issue, it sounds like both groups have ideas of similar things that could be done so that we could have nicer roads at a more equitable um, cost for everyone. Well, that court case was settled in favor of allowing these. One of them was. Oh, That's what I read. It's been a busy week at work. I haven't read anything lately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Well, good. Well, we'll we'll plan on doing that then. Yeah. If you Thank want you me to set it. them up, just give me what month you want me to bring them out. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Thanks, Deb. Yep. Sure, it, they were good conversations. They yeah, ours is great to, to work with. I, I like them. Yeah, they are. So. All righty, very good. So the next one is discussion and possible action regarding a policy on using state contracts for vehicle and equipment purchases. Uh, have we been able to connect with uh, Tim? I show him as unmuted now on the his phone thing. So, all right. 
Does anyone know when you're on the phone? Like, isn't it like star something or pound something or what is it that you use to mute and unmute? I always use the app. Sorry, <laughs> if I need to do such things. Oh, there, so it's unmute or you're that you're muted now, Tim. Now it says unmuted. Huh. I can't hear you. Yeah, we can't hear you. Well, we can we can move this to the next meeting then. I, I kind of would like Tim to go through it for us. Is that all right? We'll just we'll just uh, uh, move this to the next uh, meeting. Oh, we got a chat here from Tim. He says next meeting will be fine. Okay, very good. <laughs> All right, last one. Discussion and possible action regarding grants for lights in Xander Park. Um, I'll take you through this. This was again where um, the, the request was to, to light the boardwalk uh, in uh, Xander Park. Um, my idea was since we're investing, potentially investing in um, up basically economic uh, development with tourism, with the exterior bathrooms of the new city hall, uh, plus the extended parking lot that we throw in lighting of the board, boardwalk in that group. Um, so the money that we were already planning on spending could be used as a match to get us the lighting on the boardwalk with the idea that the whole reason for the parking lot and the bathrooms is to get more usage out of Xander Park and the trail system. But we also need to be aware and try to make sure it's safe to get from the park to the parking area to the bathrooms, which would be lighting uh, at least parts of the boardwalk, but I could see uh, justifying it if it's under a trails grant, because our trails will be hopefully hooking up to the Driftless Trail at some point when that gets built. So I kind of put the numbers together that, so that's kind of the background and the idea of how to come up with matching funds without actually needing to spend more money. So. The new restrooms, I think these numbers are pretty solid. Uh, the new restrooms at Bear Park, they're six by eight. Um, the engineer, our village engineer, solid numbers right now that they're using for calculating bathrooms is $350 a square foot. Two bathrooms at 4896 comes up with the 33,600. The parking lot was a little different because uh, I had to make some assumptions. One, I'm counting on or hoping that we can get 100 parking stalls in the lot with the building. That may or may not happen. I looked at our current village hall. We have 26 stalls. And if you count the three stalls that are being covered by dumpsters, it would be 29. I would I put that if we were just building the village hall police station, we'd probably put in around 50 parking spots. So the difference would be what would be the extended parking lot. So 150 to the village, I'm using 50 as for economic development. Um, we currently this year are going to uh, expand uh, a parking lot down by the hardware store that outlot there. There's 18 parking stalls. We're paying $85,000. So I just, which includes uh, uh, curb, gutter, asphalt um, at uh, the 18. So I just divided it out and comes out to the 4,722. Again, we did some of the work, but it would cost more because it's a smaller area versus a big parking lot. So that one can move a little bit, but it's easily going to be within that 100 to $200,000, which um, the lighting bids a while back were 100,000 to 200,000. So for a match, we're, we're right there if it's a 50-50 match. So then I just went on the internet 
and uh, threw in uh, grants for parks, grants for trails, grants for economic development. And uh, these are the grants that reading the description of them, I felt could be uh, worth going after um, uh, for the match, for the grant part to use for a match. And that's not something I don't think we should be doing. Uh, because it's really in the park. So it would be a referral. We would recommend that this information gets referred to Parks and Recreation and they would be in charge of evaluating what grants to go after for, for that and what type of lighting and all that good stuff. So that's just a summary of, of what you have right there in front of you. Questions? Why are we paying to... Get more of a parking lot for the hardware store. Uh, that was part of the the deal in bringing the hardware store to town. Is, oh, is to expand, and that was part of a. If you go back, uh, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years, there was a. We spent uh, money to have a plan made to how Rita developed that area, and I think that was part of that. Uh, did we ever get anywhere with the owner of that area for getting them to maybe clean it up? Uh, we're working on that. We're definitely working on that. He did not, uh, um, I, I, I'm not sure exactly what his plans are. Um, I think there was some hope that with the hardware store, they have other uh, areas of that company that hopefully, I think there was some thought that maybe some of those other uh, stores like a pet store, they have a chain of pet stores would be coming in there. So I, I haven't talked to him for probably four months now on this. So I'm not really sure what his plans are. Uh, he's been pretty cooperative and working with us. I don't know if he's willing to put a lot of money into it. It's kind of interesting because that's all condo association stuff. It's really not, um, it's weird. I mean, that, that Ace Hardware is actually a condo and the residents, the condo association of people had to approve it and the, con, uh, the association of businesses had to. It's a very, very interesting way how that development was put in. I never recommend doing that again. No. <laughs> it's they, a disaster. <laughs> yeah, their attorneys uh, just could not believe, and they had no idea how to work through it, to be honest with you. It took them a tremendous amount of time to understand how to work through it. And technically, if you read it, the first four condo units are supposed to be taking care of that outlocker, the park of ours. And they, they've never done anything there. So it sounds like a lovely, sternly worded letter to say, you promised to do this, now do it. Well, I don't think any of those people who live in there knew that was, I mean, if you looked at the agreement, it's probably an inch thick. Sounds like fun reading, actually. Well, feel free. Um, uh, but anyways, what are other people's thoughts? I'm curious how much lighting are we just talking about lighting for safety? Or are we talking about making it totally bright so you can no. read a book no it's just lighting so you don't stumble on the boardwalk and i i we i i know michael's the expert on this and i'm sure he'll get involved in it when it gets to parks and recreation um but we're not talking about the types of lights or anything like that that's all another committee i don't care if it's sustainability or parks and recreation that's that's really not a finance thing we are here to try to find a way to get funding for the lights. That's kind of what our task was. And I believe Parks and Rec has the lighting part of it. So this would go so they would have some ideas of how 
they could come up with um, a match for a grant. Anybody yes, I'm in favor of this. I thought it was a, a great idea. Hopefully we can get one of them to stick. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm hoping it, it, it would be a way. I think it fits very nicely into the whole increasing uh, the trails, the park use, special events. I, I just it fits right in with our um, with the infrastructure. I think that can easily be part of it. Also, you know, if it's all being built together, so why not? Yeah. Uh, I'm all for getting somebody else to pay for it. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Uh, Michael, Jed, comment. Jed Jed must have dropped off. Oh no, there he is. Sorry. I'm here. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm obviously for that. Um, I guess I'm not. So the the grants is basically what we're trying to do is figure out how we could get grants. That's the purpose for the discussion. Yes, it's to to fund it. Uh, um, so the, the idea is since we're already investing money, why not use that as a match to get another part, another thing? That's kind of what we're trying to do. Yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously, I think it's uh, I think it's something that's needed and it makes sense. So I'm in favor. Do you yeah. need us to vote on it or anything? Yeah, we will. But I just want to make sure, Michael, you want to just comment? I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it sounds great if they want to fund this where these grants would be opportunities that Parks and Rec wants to look into. Yeah. Well, I have talked to uh, Mike and he's very appreciative that we've done something like this and he thinks his committee will be excited and to, to, to do this. So yes, I would like a motion uh, to um, move this memo to forward this memo to the board with the re recommendation to refer it to Parks and Recreation. Uh, motion to have the board send this to Parks and Recreation. All right. Do I have a second? Can I get a clarification? I think you were asking okay. for it to get moved to board and then referred down to parks. Is that right? Yeah, that would be. I'm not sure so, I heard the motion right. Yeah. So you don't even have to say. The, I'm, not the, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just trying to make sure. No, I think the motion can be just to move the memo to the board because the recommendation at the end of the of the memo is to refer it to the parks and recreation. So we just really, the motion can stay as is, but it can also just be to take the, the um, memo and send it to the village board. But we have, we have the motions, how it's written. So do I have a second to that? I'll second. All right. So I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Oh, okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. All right, very good. So that'll go to the June uh, board meeting. All right. Let's see, what are we at here? Let me just go down here. I think just future. Oh, future agenda items. Anybody got anything? All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion uh, to adjourn, please. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second. All right. All right. I have a motion and a second. All in to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same. So moved. Thank you very much. Good meeting. We'll see you in July. Oh, we should talk July 5th. We're, we're keeping that, right? It sounds like it. Okay. All right. Very good. Everybody have a good evening.
You too. Okay, yeah.